Hey everybody, Bryn Allen here, and today's video is going to be a little bit different. My Uncle Mike and his brother Terry were kind enough to send me some video of them fishing over in Indian Prairie uh, off of Lake Okeechobee. And they're fishing for some bluegills on some fly rods, so I said, you know what? This would be a great opportunity to do a reaction video. So, that's what we're going to do. Buckle up. I think it's going right now. Okay. We're going to try this. We don't have any idea what we're doing, but we are fly rodding Indian Prairie Canal. We're fixing to get out there and get after them with a fly rod. And we'll be back in a minute to show you exactly what happens. All right. So this is uh, Terry's boat. He's got a, I believe, an 1860 Crestliner similar to my dad's uh it's a little bit older a little bit different features but good morning oh boy you know what it starts the video over okay good morning here we go here we go Let's see what happens we have no idea what's gonna happen <laughs> we never do no we don't that's fishing so i think these guys are using like a second gen gopro for this so they were kind of unsure, like when it was recording, when it would cut off. But actually, the footage it looks pretty good. Not bad for an older GoPro. Well, so far I haven't seen a bed. Of course, I don't have a lot of light to work with. Yeah, it really helps when the sun is I out. I was a popper the other day, either I fished him with just the uh, spider. Oh, I've got a green spider on him, and I don't know if that's going to get done. Yeah, so they're using sinking up. spiders for the fly. But yeah, like I was saying, it's a lot more helpful to locate beds when the uh, when the sun is out. No question, we'll have to edit this part out. <laughs> Sorry, Terry. You want to try cricket? I don't. Still want to try one now. bed right there by my popper. It's hard to tell if you get a reflection off the bank. Now that is a bed right where you landed. Fish on. Oh boy. Oh. <laughs> he rolled up there like a jack to the Oh, mouth. you saw him? Oh, yeah. What is it? Oh, Big giant bluegill. bluegill. So, if you guys have never fished for bluegill with fly rods before, it is some of the most fun stuff you will ever do. Um, and if you've never fly fished before, uh, my father and I only recently got into it the last like five or six years, um, and we learned how to do it basically from Terry and Mike, my uncle Mike. Um, but yeah, it's really fun. Uh, it's it's a little more work than just casting for them and everything, but man, it's it's unlike anything else. It's it's really fun to get into. Here we go. I not do the popper deal. I would imagine, I thought as calm as it was, that they would, I could entice somebody to eat that popper. Oh, there's a bluegill sitting right under it. Oh, Fish on. You, you just came up with sitting right under it. 
I think that that thing is aiming too far offshore. Oh, fish on! Oh yeah. Here they. Well, there seems to be a few bluegills here. It's a nice Beautiful gill. Bluegills. But a gorgeous fish. Good and healthy. Huh? I said they're good and healthy. Well, they are. Too close come, now. Come on, buckle. Inexperience. Like a thousand beds right there. I think there's one on that side of that willow. Boom! <laughs> right, he's darned it. <laughs> um, I don't know how he come on, buckle. Mike, my my <laughs> Oh my gosh! <laughs> well, they don't. They don't. They're not really. Interested in that popper, I can tell you that. No, they're not. I think we have popped our last pop for right now. Yeah, my Uncle Mike's reactions to kitten strikes is priceless. They're they're so funny. Uh, you can like when we're fishing on the same lake or you know river or whatever. I mean, we can hear him down the whole stretch. He's so loud, <laughs> and when both of them get going, it's hilarious. Um. But yeah, so what they're talking about, uh, poppers and spiders, um, if you guys aren't familiar with the fly fishing thing. Uh, so poppers are basically just kind of a floating fly. And you kind of you see how he's popping that rod a little bit. Um, it just gives a lot of topwater action. And typically the bluegills will come up and strike it, suck it down. Um, and then the sinking spiders, um, you know, they just kind of slowly fall down. And uh, they'll usually... Bluegill are really funny. They'll either eat one or the other typically, but um, like the last time I went out with my dad on Indian Prairie, as a matter of fact, I could not get anything to eat a popper. Anything. Not even a mind cichlid. So uh, yeah, I put on a spider, and then I started pulling in some fish. So it really just depends. Uh, time of day, um, what they're in the mood for. Let's go to the spider. I think we're. Oh, oh boy. Oh. Strike. You need to get up here, Mike, so we. Oh, well. <laughs> when? A week from now? When I've loaded the boat. <laughs> Love the banter. Love it. Good gracious alive, what a bluegill. Yeah, that was a nice fish. Mm, mm, mm. He needs to get up there in front of the camera so we can see it. My legs are behooved. They're boogied. Get some sun on them here, we might be able to see something. Yep. Sun is a huge help. Especially if we're not using any kind of side imaging. Ooh. There he goes. Alright. Come up closer to me. Or you're gonna, I, think you're gonna, I don't know how wide that angle is. We'll have to, have to watch it. Get one of these in. Hmm. Come up? Uh, no. I just saw the line straighten out. I was turning over from one straightening out. I thought it was straightening out, but it was turning over. Alright, come on, fish. Get with it. Mm, 
Oh. Yeah. Fish on. Yes, it's fishing. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I tell you what, they float up there when they float purple. up there like that. It is fun to watch them. I mean, they have purpose when they do that. Oh, I think we're shooting way out the side of the boat. Yep. Unbuckle. Yeah, it looked like he had a cichlid there. The cichlids are fun to catch, and they're really good eating too. I think some people consider them trash fish because they're non-native. Not invasive, but they are not native. But they eat really well. I wonder if we ought to get this. I don't know. But walk up close. Can you fish in closer to the edge? <laughs> not comfortable. Without falling out? Not comfortable, sir. It looks good, guys. It looks good. These GoPros are plenty of wide angle. Come on, fishy. That's got to be a dead right. Get him! Oh. Got him? <laughs> That is a slammer bluegill. Oh, doobly's. That's a slammer bluegill there. Hold him up to the limb so we can. And they're hungry too. This one's sucked down all the way. Yep, that is a healthy bluegill. Hold Both of them. Cool on this one. Oh, bust out the unhook him. Almost threw him down. That's the man. And you're for fly fishing, you absolutely should have one of those on hook of tools. I don't know if this is one of yours. Or no, I don't, know, I don't know that that's one of mine. Looks like a helicopter coming through there right now. Yeah, that's never good. <clears throat> Oof. No! Oh! He missed it? He come up and just did miss it. Mama. Female? Female, yeah. Well, let her go so we got fish next year. Good Samaritan. How to chuck his ass in the cooler. Turn that camera on and off. Starts a new phase. That's where you're gonna have to edit all that stuff. Mike, oh, Mike oh. go missing. Watch that rod. I wanna leave it lay there a second. It's a nice fish. That's clearly a bed. This is a bed right here for sure. I'm getting a little bit closer shot here. Figures. As soon as you get that camera out, the whole place goes stone dead. <laughs> Might have got that one. That was like a yeah, get jack him on curve there. Get him here. <laughs> a jack curve All right, we got him. Nice bluegill there. Now, let's see. It's a slammy. Come on, baby. All right, let's get in there and hook that one. Hooked it, rehooked him on the way out. That happens. Nice fish. Yep. Mm, that mm. He snuck up there. I didn't see him. Incognito fish. Nice bluegill. <laughs> oh, that's a little fella. Oh, 
<laughs> oh, that's brutal. Come on, Uncle Mike. That is brutal. Hilarious. <clears throat> well, Terry's putting a hurting on him so far. Oh my well, that god. That looked like a red belly. My lures who I mean bad. Oh. <laughs> god, a lot of little fish. Ripping them little buddies out of there. Entice something out of the depths right there. There's a deep bed right there. It's hard to tell the difference though. In the moment. Oh! <laughs> oh we could have got that one on there. Okay. There he goes. The master with the master tool. I rehooked him. Snagged in the back and the tail. Good gracious, how's that happen? Is that a bluegill? I don't know how that happened. Have you got a net? Catfish, maybe? That is a big old bagasse in the front there now. Looks like it's wrapped around his tail, whatever it is. Well, if you ain't got their head, you ain't got much. Oh, that's oh. a hideous creature. That is a hideous creature. I think it's one of them armored that's catfish, a maybe? Pleco or a Pacostomus. Actually, think, these are the guys that bore all invasive. the holes in the bank. Yeah. So they are an invasive species, and we're going to mm -hmm. make sure this guy doesn't invade anything else. <laughs> <laughs> that's one that's way of doing it. Game Commission would tell you to do with them. Yeah. I'm curious if that pterodactyl will be able to do anything with him. No. Pterodactyl wouldn't mess with him. He's yeah, if y'all ever catch them things, freaking kill them. Throw them on the bank like Terry did there. Or just kill them. Get rid of them. All they do is damage the banks and everything. Oh, whoa! Oh. Now I recognize the stretch they're on right here. Pretty much rocks along both sides, all the way down to the bridge there. If anyone's ever been to Indian Prairie before, you probably recognize it. When you find them, they can't not eat this spider. Kind of hard to tell. It seems like they're pretty close to the bank. That would drive me nuts. I have to be, especially if I'm fly fishing, I got to be a little further back. I hate fishing too close like that. Doing the Okeechobee shuffle. No oh! Nice 
fish. And you see how these guys both have the unhook them tools uh, around their necks on the lanyard there. I've recently started doing that myself because it's just way easier just to grab it. Because I'll typically keep mine in my tackle box or right up on the front of the boat somewhere. But it's just way easier to have that around your neck, just like he's doing. Tuck the rod underneath your, your arm there and just exactly how he's doing it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that happens. Not bad. You gotta work that hard. <laughs> he overpowered. Then just throw him overboard. <laughs> you overpowered by bluegill. <laughs> oh, uh, listen, bluegill. They are some strong fish. Despite their size, they are strong. Definitely strong. But you guys have seen me. I've lost dozens of fish trying to throw it into the chute and it just bounces off. Yeah. Oh my gosh, what is Oh. These guys are on it. It's killing it. I mean, smoked it too. Uncle Mike's putting a herd in on his brother there. And I know you guys can't quite see in this frame here. Maybe they'll show it later, but um, right at the bottom of the screen there, you'll see just the outside of the chute they have. Uh, you guys know I use the catch counter on my boat, um, but Terry actually, maybe it's both Terry and Mike, is, um, they both weld, I believe, but that's a homemade shoot uh, that they've had for years and years, um, and it works really good. It's uh, It does the same thing the catch counter does, it's just homemade, but yeah, maybe they'll show it a little bit later, it's pretty neat. Nice fish. Little nice bluegill. Mm hmm. It's a good eater there. Doublies. So they're talking a lot about females, and it looks like they're throwing the females back, which, you know, it's fine. Um, 
I'm not sure how they're identifying between the two. I mean, as far as I understand, the most common ways to look for that are like the ears on the bluegill will be a little bit larger for males. And typically, uh, bluegill will be uh, bluegill males will be a lot darker in color than females will be. So females will be lighter in color and smaller ears. Uh, from what I understand, Terry just mentioned something about the the copper head. Um, I'll have to ask him if that's a way of identifying a male. I, I'm not too sure on that. Man, they're freaking slaying it now. Oh. Oh my a cichlid? That's gotta be a cichlid. That hurts the bluegill of the century. Oh, yeah, it's icky. Do you have a... Yeah, cichlids are fun fish to fight, especially on some light tackle like that. Yeah, they must be on top of some cichlid beds. And that's a that's a tough thing to identify when you're spotting beds, you know, without any or even with side sonar. It's tough to differentiate cichlid beds from bluegill beds cuz I think generally cichlid beds will be a little bit larger in diameter, but uh but still it's when you're spotting them it's it's a little harder to differentiate, I think. Um and Bluegill beds will be clustered up a lot tighter from what I've seen. But uh, when you're just spotting them over the side of the boat, it's it's kind of it's hard to identify. Gilly. Yeah. Nice fish. Nice big blue gill. These guys are going to have a full cooler before long. They usually do. Funny how you got up. Still can't get over how close to the bank they are. Surprised they're not spooking them fish. Oh! Yeah, baby. 
Came out of that black thing right there, we were, thing is, it smoked it. Oh, yeah. That looks like a bed right here, man. You see it? Mm -hmm. I'm about to give the camera to the most inept fisherman I've ever seen in my life. Guy's been trying for the last 45 minutes to catch a fish. Now he's going to show you a bucket full of fish they ain't caught none of. <laughs> Here he is, my brother Mike. <laughs> okay, Mikey. It's, it's, it's going. Good it's afternoon. Going. Let, me, <laughs> let me show you what I caught today. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I caught most of those, I think. Man, that's a, that's a proper mess. Those people are not that stupid. I'm sure. Yeah, there we go. So that's that's a good shot of uh, their little homemade shoot. Uh, it's definitely more robust than the catch counter. But, uh, yeah, same concept. It's, I mean, again, it's just a flapper with a counter on it. Not uh, anything too crazy. But, man, that is a mess oh. of fish there. All on the fly rod. Mm -hmm. Can be done. I think it's going All right. All right. Well, that was that was pretty cool. That uh, I tell you, anytime we go out with these guys um, in separate boats, you know, I'll be with my dad and they'll be together. They always smoke us every time. At least I don't recall a time when <laughs> we did better than them, whether it's spec fishing or bluegill fishing. Terry is one of those guys that just, I, I don't know, any of you guys out there that fish a lot, you know there's those people that just have that unique ability to just find fish and just seem to have a lot of luck. Terry is one of those guys. Um, I don't think it's so much luck, but I think it's, you know, years of of doing it and, and the expertise of just figuring these fish out, specs especially. Um, really just an, an artisan of, of the sport. So, uh, both my dad and I have learned a lot from Terry. So, um, yeah, I, you know, this was a really great video. I hope, I hope they, uh, send me some more stuff in the future. Cause this was really cool to kind of look at and share with you guys, of course. Um, but, uh, yeah, Indian Prairie. Uh, I think this was about, uh, what, I've had this for probably a month or so, maybe a little over a month. I'm just now getting a chance to, to do this. So, um, yeah. And my father and I were just out there a, a week ago. Um, and we did not do anywhere near this well. So, you know, granted, I believe they're fishing on the moon in this video. So there's always that advantage. And when I went down there, we were not, I think we were a week or two past the moon. So we did not have that advantage. Uh, but it seemed like when we went further up uh, towards the mouth of Indian Prairie Canal towards the lake, um, we got into some really nice cichlid beds. And we freaking, I mean, we caught a bunch of them, really nice size. Um, unfortunately, I did not have the GoPro out there that day. But, uh, it was really fun. So, uh, but we did spot a bunch of bluegill beds. We just couldn't get anything to commit on them. So, that's just how it goes sometimes. Uh, but yeah, again, this was really cool. So, thank you, Uncle Mike. Thank you, Terry. And, uh, if you guys have not purchased an Unhook'em tool, go over to his website. Uh, this is Terry's, uh, invention. Uh, it's unhook'em.com. And uh, they're pretty cheap. I think they're like 20 bucks, a little over 20 bucks now. But uh, yeah, just a really great tool. You guys have seen me use it in a bunch of my videos. Um, but especially if you're fly fishing, 
makes it really easy to get it out of those mouths because obviously bluegill mouths are a lot smaller than specs. But uh, yeah, check him out at unhook'em.com. And that's about it. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.